MBC MHS Conveyor Nita Belt Welding Instructions. Items required. Safety. Always lock out power source and follow recommended safety procedures. Make sure the main air regulator is at 40 PSI. Turn off the air supply to the take-up unit. This moves the take-up pulley to the retracted position, which allows you to work with the maximum belt slack. Turn off the power to the logic modules. Please note, if you can't find the power supply, you can disconnect the main power to the logic modules. This will allow air to flow through to the pressure pans and push the pressure pans down. Remove the rollers between two pressure pan supports in a three foot zone. Any zone can be selected, but it is easier if you select one near the charge or discharge end of the conveyor. Remove any finger guards. Uncoil the Nita belt. If replacing an existing belt, cut the previous belt straight. Please note, for new installation, use the NBC threading tool. This is located and attached under each drive direct from the factory. Duct tape the top and bottom of the old belt end to the new Nita belt end. Make sure the thick polyurethane side is up on the Nita belt. Also make sure to keep both belts flat and straight and do not overlap the belts. Pull the new Nita belt through the conveyor. Make sure the Nita belt is routed correctly over all the return pulleys underneath the conveyor. Remove the duct tape. Before cutting the belt to length, double check to make sure there is 36 inches of overlap for the belt welding process. Both belt ends must be straight. Using the Nita finger punch press, assemble the handle and place the press with the arrow sticker pointing in the belt flow direction. Loosen the bolts to the hold down plates. Insert one end of the belt, polyurethane side up, through the notched guide on the hold down bar. Slide the belt all the way through to the other end of the press. Hold the belt firmly while tightening the hold down bar's bolts in an alternating pattern. Position the index pin with the first outside hole on the hold down plate. Starting at one end of the puncher, make sure the top pin is aligned with the outside hole. Press the handle all the way down. This is the first punch of six needed for each belt end. Return the handle to the original position. Move the support plate to the next hole and repeat the process. Please note, warning. Each hole must be punched in proper sequence and in every hole, six times total. Failure to do so will cut off one of the fingers, making the belt unspliceable. Loosen the hole downs and remove the belt. Repeat the process for the other belt end. Thread the belt into the puncher from the opposite direction. Warning, do not rotate the finger punch press. The press must stay in the same orientation for the entire process. Trim approximately one quarter inch off each fingertip. This will mate each finger in the presetter to ensure a good splice. Install one end of the belt in the presetter mold, making sure the belt fingers are centered in the presetter plate. Insert the other end of the belt and slide the fingers together, mating them with no overlaps or large gaps.
Install the silicone sheet with textured side facing down on the belt finger spliced section. Place the pre-setter top plate centered over the finger spliced area. Once the top plate is centered, tighten the keeper plate wing nuts to keep the belt flat and secure. Place the welder press on the conveyor and set the pre-setter mold center in the weld press. Caution: Be careful not to pull out the belt from the pre-setter as this may cause the finger splice to gap or overlap. Clamp the press closed and turn the knob until it slips. Plug in the welder cord and push the yellow button to start. Please note, the green light is the actual temperature reading. The amber light is the welder press pre-programmed temperature and should be set to 185 degrees Celsius. Also please note, the weld cool down process is done when the actual temperature gauge, the green light, is 50 degrees Celsius or lower. Warning, weld press is hot. MHS conveyor recommends wearing heat resistant gloves when operating the press. Warning, the weld press is hot. Do not leave the press unattended while in use. Failure to remain in attendance at the press while it is being used may cause others to touch the press and get burned. Only when the actual temperature, the green light, is 50 degrees Celsius or lower and when the welder press power cord is unplugged is it safe to open the welder press. Loosen the knob and pull the clamp down to open the press. Remove the pre-setter mold, top plate, silicone sheet and loosen the keeper plate wing nuts to unlock the belt. Remove the belt from the pre-setter mold. Inspect the top and bottom of the belt. Make sure the belt splice has smoothly joined even fingers with no bubbles, gaps, or overlaps. If excess material is present, carefully trim the excess material off the side edges of the belt. Please note, do not cut into the belt. Reinstall the finger guards and the rollers. Turn on the air to the take-up unit. Restore power. Need a corporation splice troubleshooting air bubbles and gaps. Cold cook. This is caused when power is not constant. Power needs to be constant, standard, 110 volts. You should also use a short power cord. 110 volt not available? Use power generator over 3500 watts. No impression cloth or silicone sheet. Fingers too far apart. Cooking the belt with the fingers too far apart. Top arrow shows proper fingers splice. Belt fingers not trimmed properly, causing the material to push under. Mismatched or bending of the belt fingers caused by not securing the pre-setter keeper plate wing nuts. Pre-setter mold not centered in the weld press. If the top presetter plate is not centered over the finger splice area, this will cause one side of the splice not to fuse. Buildup of urethane caused by the presetter mold not being centered in the weld press properly. For more MHS conveyor videos, visit mhs-conveyor.com.